Welcome back. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and promulgated Law 1 of 2024, amending Article 1 of Decree Law 10 of 1976 regarding housing following the approval of the Shura and Representatives Council. Article 1. The text of Article 1 of Decree Law 10 of 1976 regarding housing shall be replaced with the following text. The Ministry of Housing is responsible for providing housing for citizens with a limited income by providing the following services. 1. Obtaining a residence through ownership or rent. 2. Financing the purchase, construction or renovation of a residence. 3. Obtaining a housing unit. This shall be through any of the housing programmes provided by the Ministry. The Minister of Housing may include any other services aimed at providing housing for citizens with limited income. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, a Chairman of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, BOC, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday received the German Basketball Federation Chairman and International Basketball Federation FIBA Treasurer, Ingo Weiss, and FIB Chief Operating Officer, Patrick Mathrillo. GSA Vice President, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Cabinet Affairs and BOC a Deputy Chairman, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Ayman bin Tafik Al Muayyad, and GSA CEO Dr. Abdul Rahman Asker were also present. During the meeting, His Highness asserted Bahrain's keenness and cooperating and coordinating with the various sporting organisations, entities and federations in service of the development of the sports sector in the Kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Khalid welcomed the FIBA delegation, noting the vital role played by the federation in promoting and developing basketball throughout the world, in addition to the wide popularity of the game and the gains achieved by FIBA. His Highness discussed with the delegation means of enhancing joint cooperation that contribute to development of Bahraini basketball. He expressed aspiration to organise many joint programmes and projects that serve the game and boost the status of the kingdom, which is considered part of FIBA. Wishing the delegation success. The Supreme Council of Health, the SCH and the National Committee for United Procurement of Medicines and Medicinal Supplies organised a symposium on managing and organising the use of pharmaceutical evidence. In the presence of the Chairman of the SCH, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, with the participation of an elite of experts and specialists in various pharmaceutical sectors. The symposium highlighted the importance of a clear scientific mechanism and methodology in evaluating scientific, clinical and medicinal studies. Practical models of some of the modern mechanisms and systems applied in a number of prestigious hospitals in the region and abroad were presented. The lectures discussed the necessity of having a clear, descriptive guidelines and clinical information that helps specialists provide high quality services, make optimal and rational use of resources and control financial costs. The Attorney General, Dr Ali bin Fadl al buenin held a press conference to announce the Public Prosecution's annual statistics for 2023. Dr al buenin confirmed that the Public Prosecution, within the framework of its commitment to implementing the law, always takes into account the basic interests and social and developmental dimensions. The Attorney General said that 2023 witnessed some important updates in the work of the Public Prosecution as he issued a decision to add a new jurisdiction to the Financial Crimes and Money Laundering Prosecution, which is to investigate and act in cases related to infringement on the funds of companies or institutions in which the state contributes a certain share, whatever the amount of that share and in whatever capacity the state's contribution is. A guideline was also launched for the mechanism of hearing a child's statements only once in sexual assault crimes in cooperation with the relevant authorities. He praised the public prosecution's successful social initiative CARE and the cooperation of the partner agencies in this initiative. The Attorney General affirmed that the public prosecution pays great attention to online fraud cases and has taken initiatives, in addition to confronting these crimes judicially, launching an awareness campaign on the public prosecution's official social media accounts on a regular basis. He indicated the public prosecution's keenness to strengthen its capabilities and develop its methods of work to keep pace with all developments. 
the Attorney General announced that the achievement rates had reached 99% and a decrease in the number of cases referred to the courts compared to 2022. Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl Buainain highlighted the most significant achievements witnessed in 2023 by the public prosecution, uh, starting with the very impressive 99% case completion rate, a rate which has been consistent throughout uh, the previous years. Uh, moving on to the issuance of the Attorney General decision to add jurisdiction to the financial crime and money laundering prosecution to include uh, targeting the funds of private companies and institutions with any state contribution, regardless uh, the amount of that contribution. Uh, the conference also sheds light upon the launch of the guidance for uh, uh, questioning children in cases of sexual assault in collaboration with uh, relevant authorities to spare the child any harmful psychological effects from recalling the incident uh, several times. Uh, several other matters were also reviewed and discussed throughout uh, this conference. And to speak more about the press conference, we are joined over the phone by Chief Prosecutor Ahmed Afadl. Hello, Mr Afadl. Can you tell us about the achievements of the public prosecution during the year 2023, which were discussed in the press conference today? Hello and good evening. Um, today, the public prosecution announced its accomplishments for the year 2023 in a detailed manner at their press conference. Dr. Ali bin Fadl Bainin, the Attorney General, in his opening speech, focused on the key achievements and decisions made during the year. He explained the legal and practical reasons necessitating these decisions. Among the significant achievements was the expansion of the financial and money laundering prosecution's jurisdiction to include investigating and handling cases involving the aggression on the funds of companies and institutions in which the state has any shares, regardless of the extent of the share or the nature of the state's particip participation in these entities. This decision was made to extend procedural protection over public funds, especially in private nature entities, by precisely investigating and resolving such cases. Another notable accomplishment this year was the launch and activation of the one-time child questioning guide during the stages of inquiry, investigation and trial developed in cooperation with the relevant entities and the criminal processing of children. This guide aims to spare children from repeating or repeatedly recalling the circumstances of such crimes which could harm their, their mental health. The Attorney General also highlighted the focus on electronic fraud crimes, including um, or uh, which, are, which lead to several uh, initiatives to combat these crimes and protect citizens and residents. This included launching awareness campaigns on the prosecution's official accounts, uh, outlining fraud methods and urging caution with personal and banking information. Furthermore, the public prosecution saw the need to collaborate with security and executive agencies and other relevant entities on the electronic means used in fraud crimes. This led to organizing a roundtable discussion titled Electronic Fraud, Challenges and Responses, with participants from the Ministry of Interior, bank officials, financial institutions, and telecommunications companies. This event discussed strategies to reduce, uh, to reduce electronic fraud crimes, resulting in several important recommendations currently being implemented. As for the public prosecution's performance statistics for 2023, it reached 99%, and the Attorney General commended the efforts of members and employees of the prosecution, which led to achieving this high efficiency rate. And that was Chief Prosecutor Ahmed Afadl. Thank you very much for joining us. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Al Ziani, delivered a speech during the third South Summit of G77 plus China, which is being held in the Ugandan capital, Kampala, under the chairmanship of the President of Uganda, Yoweri Museveni. And with the participation of a number of leaders and heads of governments and representatives of member states. The Minister affirmed Bahrain's readiness to enhance joint cooperation with all countries and organisations with the aim of addressing the most important contemporary challenges, including ending conflicts and preventing the outbreak of new conflicts, building a culture of peace, coexistence and dialogue in the face of fanaticism and terrorism, reducing the effects of climate change and emphasising the need for clean, sustainable and safe energy for all, ensuring full protection and support for the most vulnerable groups, 
providing opportunities for all to enjoy a safer and more prosperous future and achieve the goals of sustainable development. He affirmed the need for real international cooperation and joint efforts in light of the multilateral action framework, which provides a platform for developing countries to promote the economic and collective interests and support sustainable development efforts. He asserted that achieving sustainable development goals for 2030 cannot be achieved without multilateral collective action, stressing Bahrain's affirmation of the importance of joint diplomatic work in ending wars and resolving regional and international disputes and conflicts with peaceful means. He reiterated Bahrain's stance that calls for providing a political solution that leads to a two-state solution by establishing the independent Palestinian state and the importance of unifying international efforts to end the threat to freedom of navigation and international trade in the Red Sea. The meeting approved the summit's concluding statement that stressed G77 countries' respect of purposes and principles of the UN Charter and international law. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif Al Ziani, met at the Ugandan capital Kampala with the Saudi Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Walid Akariji, on the occasion of the third South Summit of G77 plus China. The two sides discussed the course of the historic fraternal relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and the development they witness in all fields to serve the common interests and achieve common aspirations and goals. They also discussed the political and developments in the region and the repercussions on security and stability, as well as topics of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with his Bangladeshi counterpart Mohammed Hassan Mahmoud. Dr Al Ziani congratulated the Bangladeshi Minister on his new appointment, wishing him success. He hailed the deep-rooted bilateral cooperation and the joint efforts to further develop it. The two sides discussed the friendly ties and cooperation between Bahrain and Bangladesh in various fields and means to develop them to fulfil common interests. They also discussed a number of regional and international issues of common interest. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the University of Bahrain held its 25th graduation ceremony in the presence of the Minister of Education and Chairman of the University's Board of Trustees, Dr Mohamed Juma, the Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Hawaj, the Minister of Social Development, Asuma Al Asfour, the Minister of Information, Dr Ramzan Al Nuemi, the Minister of Youth Affairs, Rowan Tafiki, and a number of officials, academics, and guardians. During the ceremony, Dr Juma delivered a speech in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for patronising the event, which is held in light of the development achieved for the Kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He congratulated the students and their guardians and praised the university's administration. He noted the university's role in preparing students to become decision makers with competence and professionalism. The Minister also hailed the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council for their efforts in updating the policies, regulations and procedures of higher education. The President of the University of Bahrain, Dr Fouad Al Ansari, stressed the University's pride in graduating more than 92,000 of its students since 1986 and the achievements of its current students. He noted that the University is adapting its plans and programmes to achieve national goals and objectives related to the development of human capabilities. The Minister of Education, Dr Mohammed Mubarak Juma, announced the cumulative GPA improvement system for secondary school students starting from the beginning of the second semester. He stressed the Ministry's keenness to help students achieve their best levels through their own efforts and through various academic evaluation systems. The system comes within a set of constructive measures and initiatives launched by the Ministry of Education to enhance students' educational capabilities and raise their achievement levels at the various academic stages. In conjunction with the start of the second semester, the Ministry announced the opening of registration for the system starting from January the 28th until next February the 11th, which allows students to study a number of self-specified hours and then take the final exams again. The students' better grades are chosen. The Shura Council held its weekly session, presided over by its first Deputy Chairman, Jamal Fakro. 
The Council approved a proposal adding a new article to Law 17 of 2007 on professional training, which aims to achieve equal opportunities among citizens by allowing new Bahraini University graduates to begin their professional life early by receiving professional training in private sector companies where at least 50 employees work. Arab Parliament Speaker Adel bin Abdulrahman al Amsumi chaired the second plenary session of the fourth session of the third legislative term of the Arab Parliament. Al Amsumi stressed the importance of strengthening joint Arab action in light of the current challenges in the region, as it is one of the foundations of achieving security and stability. The Speaker affirmed the Parliament's full readiness to lead Arab parliamentary diplomacy to contribute to reaching final political solutions to these challenges. The session discussed the latest developments in the region, especially the Palestinian cause and developments in Sudan, Yemen, Syria, Libya and Somalia. They also discussed the draft resolutions listed on the session's agenda and the reports of the meetings of the four permanent committees, in addition to adopting the parliamentary document for Arab women in its final form. <laughs> 